Hello and welcome to Ford Water Technologies webinar series on DLE technologies and processes. In this uh, webinar, we'll be discussing the last stage of the DLE processes and focusing on uh, the lithium conversion of the final products, typically um, by precipitation crystallization. The uh, name of this webinar is Versions of Conversion, uh, Lithium Chloride Conversion by Precipitation or Crystallization Methods. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me share with you our, our presentation and uh, we can begin. So if you haven't attended the previous um, DLE webinars, please feel free to go to our website, uh, www.fordwater.com, uh, uh, and uh, you can take a look at within the um, under the webinar series and review those and um, you can get up to up to date and some background information on the different DLE processes and technologies. So in this technology, uh, just a, a quick overview. Uh, what we've talked about is I'm going to say the uh, the pre DLE uh, technologies, which is the total suspended solids removal, not solubles, but solids. Uh, sometimes you'll have particulate matter within in the brines and or sometimes residual. Uh, particulate matter from the drilling process or, or mudding. So we want to remove those. Uh, any contaminants that of concern will remove those prior to the direct lithium extraction media, the DLE, uh, the heart and soul of the system, which drives the rest of the design process. Uh, after the um, DLE, the eluent coming through, we're going to um, remove purities, could be bulk ion removal. We're going to concentrate it, polish it, those are all the um, uh, webinar topics we've talked about so far. And now we're down to the final stage of conversion and drying and milling of the, the final product. So uh, why lithium? Why, why have this the discussion? Well, as you know, that DLE or lithium within the market space is growing in demand exponentially uh, at 20, even 30 uh, compounded and annual growth rate. And why is that? Well, it's because of the electrification or uh, uh, electric vehicle de demand that is growing and electric vehicles are powered by lithium ion batteries within the lithium ion batteries as we see the description right now is is lithium um, depending on the the, the uh, lithium ion lithium phosphate the different types of batteries but still they all have lithium in it uh, this is just a, a quick picture uh, of um, the lithium ion uh, battery it's an 18 uh, 650 it's kind of what this this is what the whole thing's about um, it's about 18 wise, uh, the classifications, 18 millimeters in diameter, 600 millimeters long. Uh, any other batteries, that's what you're talking about. Diameter versus length, that's what dictates um, the, the, the model and sizing. Uh, this is cylindrical. Uh, just reference, when you take a look at a vehicle, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small battery. It only contains about 0.6 grams, but it's the volume of batteries that you have in the electric vehicles. Or, you know, in a Tesla model or others, you have anywhere from 7,000 to over 7,000 lithium ion batteries. And at 0.6 grams at that, you know, you're now up to about 4.2 kilograms. Uh, of lithium, uh, and then multiply that by the millions of vehicles that are expected to, to uh, come online by 2030, and you have a huge disconnect between supply and demand, meaning there's not enough lithium being supplied to meet the demands by 2030. In contrast, or to frame that, there's about 100,000 metric tons being produced right now globally versus a pro projected or a forecast demand of about 2 million to 3 million, depend on um, who you speak to, of uh, of lithium by 2030. So huge demand, massive compound annual growth between 20 30 uh, percent for that. So just quickly, uh, not to belabor it, is that when we take a look at a lithium a battery, whether lithium uh, uh, phosphate, lithium ion, uh, take a look at there's there's more than just lithium in, in the battery. Uh, so critical minerals in, in the supply chain. Uh, starting from graphite, aluminum, nickel, copper, some cobalt, and then all the way down to lithium. Lithium has 3% uh, of the, the mineral content or material content within a battery, but it is the lithium, which is the heart or the blood uh, of the lithium ion batteries. This does not work unless you have that. So this is why it is a critical mineral to have in order to um, I'm gonna allow us to realize that electrification uh, of our society uh, using electric vehicles. 
if I take a look at, as I mentioned before, different types of, of lithium ion batteries, still the same materials in there, different configurations, uh, different uh, precursor chemicals used. Probably the most common one is the nickel magnesium uh, cobalt oxide, which is MNC abbreviation. Why is that the most common? Well, it has the highest energy density that can be delivered uh, at, at the lowest, lowest cost. So that is why that typically demands it. There's other batteries, but just to give you kind of a frame it on what's in the market and why lithium is so important. Uh, if I take a look at some of the questions I get when designing uh, or, or um, advising on DLE processes is that, well, what should the end product be? Should it be lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide? Well, if I take a look at the, the trends, and this is from um, uh, fast markets, but also benchmark minerals, take a look at that. That's also a good um, uh, market indicator, is that typically the two track um, that lithium carbonate, lithium hydroxide, because of the demand, the pricing tracks very well. Uh, if I take a look at you know, um, one of the, the nice things about the demand and the development of the lithium market is that because there is a high price um, to be um, gained or realized with the lithium that, and because of the demand of the lithium, what you're seeing is that there's been a lot of capital investment um, into a lot of uh, new and startup direct lithium extraction companies. So that's great technologies, but demand uh, and demand is supporting uh, capital investments into that. If I take a look at just quickly, um, uh, lithium carbonate equivalent, the, the spot market pricing, uh, you can see that, you know, it's, it's around uh, $61,000 a ton forecasted by 20, you know, 2028 is around 36,000, very, very high. Um, Long-term pricing, things that you see in, PF, uh, in the a DLE companies, PFS or PEA, more, you know, I'm going to say more conservative or realistic is taking a look at um, uh, listing as around 25, maybe $30,000 per metric ton uh, within the um, preliminary economic assessments of, of the, the DLE operations. Um, and lastly, if I take a look at, you know, why is Brian occurring? Number one, if 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 I have, you know, have to make uh, two to three million metric tons of this and I'm starting with 100, the speed of, of, of bringing a plant online is critical. Hard rock, um, you're looking at environmental permits and the construction, you know, could be eight, 10 years before a, a new plant comes online at around six to eight dollars US per kilogram, if you can find the resource. Uh, whereas brine, uh, where DLE and what we're, we're talking about direct lithium extraction, is DLE has the ability to open up um, unconventional lithium resources lithium uh, brines that have uh, lithium content you know around 50 to 200 ppm which previously were not you know economically viable to produce from but with DLE it now makes it more economical it, be it becomes economically viable to to produce from um, and using conventional technologies I can produce you know uh, lithium at two to three um, dollars per, per per kilogram so a lithium uh, DLE technology been around, but the evolution and the development of technologies in DLE, uh, DLE has now um, brought it to the forefront as a very viable technology in which to allow us to meet that very large lithium demand. So enough about markets. Let's get into the meat and potatoes uh, of, of, of our discussions. So when I take a look at DLE, Number one, we uh, just quickly is that we take a look at the uh, the media loading, the media, uh, uh, the washing stage, and the unloading or the lithium stripping. Uh, whether it is absorption or ion exchange, it's the same basic principles or or cycle operations that we go through. Then we go through contaminant removal, lithium concentrated ion exchange, remove the final uh, impurities, and then over to the final stage conversion, which we'll be discussing to stage. Uh, before we start, it's just one important aspect of that. The importance of, of concentrating the eluate to the highest concentration as possible. Why is that? So there's different technologies to do that, but why is, is, it, is it critical to get it up to the highest concentration uh, after removing, I'm going to say, bulk impurities? Well, it's because of that downstream process of conversion that the higher the lithium chloride concentration I have, the easier it makes it for um, uh, ion removal or contaminant removal, so as we define as polishing, uh, because it improves the kinetics. But lastly, it improves and increases the efficiency 
uh, of the conversion process uh, because I have a very, very high concentration of lithium chloride. It, it facilitates the, the rapid precipitation um, and um, uh, removal of it from, from the aqueous solution. And we'll get into the depth of it, but really uh, when you start off your daily process, this is what you want to do. You want to concentrate the lithium chloride as high as possible because it's really going to facilitate the conversion process down, downstream. So um, taking a look at this is just um, some examples. Uh, this information is readily available on the, on the internet and on these companies' websites. Uh, so as an example, uh, you can see that uh, we've gone through typical DLE, purification, and lithium eluate uh, concentrating, and then off, and this is where it starts to differ, is the company, well, what have I decided? What product am I going to be producing? In this uh, particular one, this is a FizChem, uh, and we'll be um, discussing this a bit more. They're going to use sodium carbonate, they're, so they're using a chemical process to precipitate to produce lithium carbonate. That's just one method. Another method, such so as E3, again, this information is readily available on their website, uh, public information. Uh, they're using electrolysis. Uh, interesting. So they go through the same stages, pretreatment, um, uh, DLE, polishing, and then get to electrolysis. Electrolysis is the conversion of the product um, rather than using a chemical process. I can use electrolysis and we'll discuss that. So one is what we discuss a bit more in depth is chemical conversion, uh, which is the most common uh, in the industry today and probably the most common within the majority of, of DLE um, um, process flow sheets uh, versus electrochemical. Not saying one is better than the other. This is just, you'll see this is more, um, um, there's, I, said more, I guess, more of a preference for the chemical than the electrical chemical, and we'll discuss uh, the reasons for that. For chemical conversion, uh, affectionately called uh, PhysChem, um, for physical chemistry, uh, lithium carbonate is probably the predominant um, product uh, produced within the DLE sheets versus the lithium uh, monohydroxide. Um, just, I guess there is just, um, as we indicated uh, on the price differences, only slight. Um, so really it's just the preference uh, of the, the DLE um, producer, I'm sorry, the, the lithium producer of which product they want to go. Uh, and also taking a look at the brine I'm starting with may dictate which which direction I want to move. But lithium carbonate is probably the most common within the process flow sheets and designs and probably the, the one that I encountered the, the, the most. Again, not saying one is better than the other, just indicating what I see in the industry. So in this particular, I've, I've, I've blown this out a little bit more. Um, it isn't a mass balance or, or, or an energy balance. It's just to give you a simple uh, process flow um, uh, diagram to, to um, give you a little bit better understanding or visibility of these processes. That RO FO concentrate, we've, we've um, increased the, the lithium chloride, purity of the same process, and then this is where it starts conversion, is um, sodium carbonate, which is we term as carbonation. Uh, solids liquid, now that I have solids, I'm gonna separate that, I'm gonna washing, that removes some of the um, impurities as well, gets me up to typically my um, battery grade uh, quality that I require, drying milling, getting ready for packaging, and off it goes. There is an optional uh, direction on lithium carbonate, and we'll talk about this, is, is through crystallization. Each one of these processes uh, that I can uh, either lithium carbonate, lithium hydroxide, chemical, or electrochemical, I can use the crystallization process uh, within that. Crystallization is, uh, and we'll discuss that more, it's, it's optional. There is added um, capex and opex to it, but it, again, what will dictate that is the finished product, the, the quality, and, and I'm going to say the, the uh, uh, quality and, and characterization you're, you're trying to get to the final product will dictate whether maybe this is uh, an option you pursue or, or, or not, just the conventional process, which will still get you to your... Uh, battery grade quality. So we'll talk about each one of these um, uh, process flow sheets. So conversion, lithium carbonate, lithium hydroxide. Well, lithium carbonate um, can occur is, is typically by precipitation. Uh, it involves a physical chemical process. So we are going to have uh, reactants 
uh, products, um, uh, products and reactants from, from this uh, reaction uh, is a chemical reaction. Uh, what we're looking at, we can use different um, uh, reactants within our, our um, uh, reaction. And what we're looking at is a chemistry that will provide a carbonate source. Uh, and there's multiple um, chemistries that can provide that carbonate source. And we'll take a look at some of them. Um, but key, but once I have that carbonate, uh, precipitation uh, is the carbonate will complex with the lithium, producing lithium carbonate, which has a low solubility, so it drops out of solution. And the precipitation cause generation is amorphous solids. So think of them as not true crystalline structures, but a like a microcrystal uh, structure. Um, lithium hydroxide, whereas lithium carbonate, we're typically getting a carbonate source. Uh, well, there's different ways of doing our conversion. Uh, we can do uh, lithium hydroxide by, again, chemical reaction. I can do it by ion exchange, or I can do it by electrolysis. So there's multiple uh, options available uh, when converting to lithium hydroxide uh, versus the lithium carbonate. Um, just to point out, some DLE companies, we're talking about uh, final product of lithium carbonate, lithium hydroxide. Some um, DLE companies opt to only produce a, a purified lithium chloride. Uh, product in which then they, if they availability, they will send it off to a converter in which the converter will take the um, pure lithium chloride and then convert it to the final product. Uh, if that is available, I mean, that's a great option rather than having to build that conversion, the CapEx and OpEx associated to your um, um, uh, operations, I can focus on one specific component and then uh, have a third party do my conversion. So that may improve the, the economics um, and uh, the um, processing um, uh, efficiency of, of your process. So just saying that lithium carbonate, lithium hydroxide, but there are more and more um, converters popping up that will take the uh, raw materials and convert that to the uh, chemical precursor uh, for the batteries. Um, we'll touch on just simply, you know, what is crystallization? Um, because it can be used in um, within the lithium uh, carbonate and lithium hydroxide uh, flow sheets or designs. Is crystallization is used in, con in converting the um, uh, typically lithium hydroxide, I apologize, also lithium carbonate uh, into, into a solid. Um, and in doing so, it allows um, by forming crystals, you can have higher purities result um, from that. And the reason be is lithium chloride, you're bringing it into, um, just quickly, your lithium chloride, it comes into the conversion process. If I'm going to do crystal, uh, crystallization, it's going to come into the process um, saturated, or in some cases, super saturated, uh, very high temperatures, uh, pressures, um, and, and other um, uh, process conditions, but it'll come in saturated or super saturated. And by doing that, by having those saturated or super saturated and increasing, um, and if I increase the temperature uh, on these, uh, because typically there's reverse solubilities, then what happens, I start getting crystal growth. And the way that happens is that the ions come together um, and consolidate together into, into a unit cell. So a bunch of the ion, lithium chloride ions, or sorry, lithium hydroxide ions come together and form a unit cell. And then as we the crystal continues to grow, we have more of the lithium and hydroxide ions attach themselves to that unit cell and continue to grow and grow and grow. Uh, only the lithium and hydroxide ions will attach onto that framework or the unit cell, and it will grow out from that. That's called nucleation. And then from nucleation, we allow a little bit more time and it continues to grow and grow and grow to, to a macro crystal. And that's what we mean by crystallization. So saturated solutions for supersaturated nucleation, nucleation and then crystal growth. Uh, and from that, because, just to point out, because crystallization, this is used in the food and beverage industry and other industries, um, it allows because the ions will only attach to each other. So, and it typically precludes contaminants. So that's why you see through crystallization, 
I can produce purity levels of like 99.9% purity. Um, there is some complexities and variables associated with um, um, crystallization. Uh, there's a term oiling out. We, we won't talk about that, but that's when you don't do your process right and contaminants get in there. But done successfully, I can produce 99.9% um, uh, purity of, of um, uh, of my finished product using a, a crystal growth. And that's one of the reasons that you may opt to do crystallization. Again, I can produce battery grade using conventional methods, um, or I can produce even higher purities using a crystallization method. So up to the individual, uh, there's pros and cons to each, each one. Uh, crystallization is carried out in, in a reaction tank. Uh, and um, it can occur, just so you know, is that uh, crystallization, it may be, again, a lot of variables associated to it, uh, a lot of um, uh, as variables and a lot of design work to, to, to perfect that crystallization process for your specific process. But you may, within your process, you may have, rather than a single crystallization tank, it may be broken out into a nucleation tank and, and a crystal, crystal growth tank. So again, a lot of variables in, in different processes. Um, left best to the experts um, to to examine. So taking a look at, we talked about crystallization, but let's start now with the lithium carbonate by precipitation. Again, the, the most common. Um, precipitation of lithium carbonate using um, sodium carbonate, also known as um, soda ash or, or, or washing soda. Uh, different common names within the industry, but it's sodium carbonate. And the sodium carbonate is, is the source. Uh, we're using that because it's a source of, of carbonate. Uh, sodium carbonate, it comes in three grades. Really, the, 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 the impurities um, is not the, the grading component to it, but more so it's the density uh, of it. So light, medium, and dense. That's typically when you when you talk about sodium carbonate, that's uh, when you talk about grading, that's typically what, what you're discussing is the density uh, or concentration of, of the um, uh, the carbonate. So um, just be careful when you're ordering your carbonate that you're ordering the right density or the right grade. Um, CO2 uh, can also be used. Uh, again, it's not a carbonate, but it can be converted to a carbonate quite easily. So CO2 gas can be used um, uh, alone. Uh, and here, I'm uh, as an example, uh, this is a CO2 being bubbled in there, uh, and that's being used as the source of carbonate. Um, or it can be um, um, uh, complemented with um, CO2 as well as uh, sodium carbonate. Um, pros and cons to, 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 to each one. Um, key to doing your carbonate, carbonation process, whether you're using um, um, sodium carbonate uh, or, or CO2, is temperature um, is, is critical, and more so with the pH is uh, pH is critical for the carbonate uh, generation. And we'll take a look at that. Um, temperature, um, the combination uh, of using uh, sodium carbonate and CO2 um, has been shown to sh produce higher yields. So not that you have to do that, but something to consider that if I use CO2 and the sodium carbonate, uh, I can get a better uh, overall uh, percent yield of my production than just using a single component. Uh, we'll say the other component, um, not that it has any real bearing on, on the process, but using CO2, because it is incorporated into the carbonate, then CO2 is actually being sequestered or removed um, from the environment and, and captured in, into the lithium carbonate. So maybe or maybe not, there is an environmental uh, aspect that um, uh, may be viewed as beneficial by um, uh, capturing the CO2. So when we talk about CO2 as a source, when we're running through our process, and I said pH is, is critical, um, reason being is if you take a look at pop or beer or whatever, it, it's carbonated, it's um, typically, if you're to measure the pH, number one, it's cold to, to keep the CO2, uh, the gas in solution, the pH is low. So when we first bubble in CO2, it goes into an aqueous uh, solution. Um, if I, and I want carbonate, so what I do is that if I take the CO2 in aqueous solution, this would be at low pH, and I add 
a base such as a hydroxide and I increase the pH, what happens is I push the equilibrium uh, and the products over to a bicarbonate. Uh, and if I keep pushing that further and further to, to the, uh, the equilibrium to the right towards the product sides by adding um, uh, hydroxyl ion or increasing, I should say, increasing the pH, it causes the CO2 with an increase in pH to generate a, uh, a carbonate uh, ion, which I need within my process for the reactants. So um, that's critical. So when we add the carbonate, uh, typically it's two lithium ions to one carbonate um, uh, ion to produce my lithium carbonate. So uh, on a mass balance, we want to make sure that we, we have uh, enough carbonate to complex with, with the lithium. Uh, just to note that when you do uh, uh, a reaction through precipitation, then you typically want to add more carbonate than uh, the stoichiometric um, requirements to it. So essentially, I'm going to add excess, additional um, sodium carbonate, you know, anywhere from 10, 15, maybe you go higher. The reason be is I want that reaction to occur as fast as possible. So I want a real high concentration of the carbonate going into solution. So the speed and the efficiency of the precipitate occurs. Um, taking a look at the, the reactions, sorry, um, just as a side note, um, I can take, if it's CO2, remember uh, we, we just uh, explained here that the CO2, I need to push the CO2 um, over to, to, to the right reactants in order to form the carbonate. So sodium hydroxide, why that is in there, it is to uh, increase the pH so I maximize my uh, uh, carbonate production. Uh, and HIS means a high ionic strength solution. If I do that, I can, I can realize like an 80% 80, 80 recovery of lithium carbonate. Uh, carbonate in, in a high ionic strength, 77. Um, sodium hydroxide and CO2, 60% recovery. Sodium carbonate, 60, 62. Um, so taking a look at just quickly on the carbonate side, that if I do opt to use uh, CO2 or a combination of CO2 and sodium carbonate, again, the important principle of using CO2 is ensuring that I have the correct pH and maintain the correct pH uh, within the reactant in order to generate my carbonate. So just a um, an overview of the curve that if I have CO2 in solution, that means I have a low pH. But as I increase the pH, you can see the concentration of CO2 drops to about um, just, uh, to, uh, I'm going to say zero, just a little bit over eight. Um, but then also the carbonate, as, as the CO2 drops, I convert to bicarbonate. And then if I keep increasing the pH, you can see that the bicarbonate drops and the carbonate, which that's what I want, increases. So I can see that I've got a equal concentration of, of bicarbonate carbonate around a pH of 10. I may opt to take that up even further. Again, remember the stoichiatric two lithium to one carbonate. I want to make sure that I've got enough carbonate. And if I increase my pH, then I can generate and have more carbon available for that reaction. Again, depends on your process, depends on your wetted materials or, or, or materials com compatibility of just how far you can push that pH. But this gives you an understanding of why you want to increase the pH so I can make the carbonates available for the precipitation uh, process. So this is just a quick, um, uh, a rough diagram put together of just what it would be, CO2 gas, flow meter. Uh, here's your pH control, uh, sodium hydroxide. Um, this is a, um, a heated tank, uh, and we'll get into that why temperature is important, because we just discussed pH, but why temperature is important within that process. So when I do, just a quick comparison, uh, and I take a look at, okay, I've got my, my carbonate, my reactants are occurring. And the next thing I want to take a look at is the temperature uh, in which the precipitation or, or quasi-crystallization is occurring. So with um, ref uh, cases, uh, precipitation method of, of um, lithium carbonate using sodium carbonate, um, at around 80 degrees C, I can get a recovery of about 62% purity 95. Uh, if I do CO2, again, bump up the pH, I can get at around 80 degrees C, I get 60% recovery, 99% purity. That looks pretty good. 
At a lower temperature, 50 degrees, the same thing. Carbonate, well, look at that. My recovery is 50, it's dropped from 62 to 55. My purity is about the, you know, about the same. The same thing for sodium hydroxide. Um, I've dropped it to 50. I've gone from 60 to 50 on my percent recovery. So right away, you can see that temperature is a critical component when you're looking to precipitate lithium carbonate out of solution. So we know that lithium carbonate has an inverse solubility, meaning that the higher the temperature, the lower the solubility. The higher the temperature, mean, the, the more it's going to drop out of solution, uh, becomes less soluble. So we typically, um, not typically, we will run our precipitation uh, process at elevated temperatures to facilitate the efficiency and the speed in which precipitation will occur. Um, here's an example using um, sodium hydroxide, so 280 degrees C, um, you know, I've got now at, at, with a high ionic strength, meaning that um, I have uh, additional ions, monovalent, sorry, monovalent ions in there to increase the ionic strength, and that helps to facilitate uh, the recovery method as well. So um, if I use, uh, if I have a high ionic strength uh, lithium chloride solution, a high temperature, correct pH, uh, I can recover, you know, 80, 80 percent uh, yield uh, and 90 percent purity from that. Additional washing will, will get me up to my, my battery grade. So just as a an overview of why why pH is important to get the to to ensure that the carbonate is available uh, in solution and it doesn't go back to you know try to migrate back to CO2. So pH uh, controlling over 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 10 or more is beneficial and operating uh, using uh, conducting precipitation at elevated temperatures via v why the tanks are insulated and, and heated. So. The next step is sometimes um, is in some of the the, the offtake agreements that the DLE uh, clients are signing, or maybe the requirements. It's not only the the the, the battery grade quality, the purity of the lithium, but also it's the particle size, uh, which may dictate or have a requirement by uh, by the buyer. Uh, and when we take a look at particle size, not a a, a challenge or difficult one to understand. Um, but when I take a look at, I'm sorry, this is um, looks messy, but what I want to extrapolate here, that one is, we know that if I increase the temperature, that um, that I'll have better precipitation rates versus lower temperatures. But when we talk about particle size, uh, number one is that, uh, this is 50, um, this is just the experiment, um, could, could be 80, could be 90 degrees if you want. Um, but the the intent here to communicate uh, or the message is that if I take a look at it's 50 degrees C and here's my feed rate of 0.3 liters per minute. Uh, let's say the, the 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 sodium hydroxide. I'm, I'm sorry, the um, sodium carbonate. And then I, and I've got a, a rotation because I'm stirring. I have a a paddle in the tank and I'm stirring this, and the paddle is rotating at about 500 RPMs. Um, same temperature, same feed rate, but different um, um, rotations of the paddle. And you can see that what's happening is that I get better crystal growth or larger crystal growth when it's 500 ppm versus 600 ppm. Um, if I increase the feed rate, remember when I said if you fed an excess of sodium carbonate into the tank, if I increase my feed rate, same, same temperature, but now it's coming at 0.5 liters per minute, versus 0.3, um, same um, rotation or RPM of the paddle. And now rather than 105, I'm at 110. And at 600 PM, rather than 80, I'm 90. So I've got larger crystal growth. So just quietly to, to, to um, re recap, just to summarize is that if, if I, I mean, my pH is, is, is going to be um, right above 10 or, or more, my temperature is going to be uh, typically 80 uh, or, or above to, to facilitate precipitation. But if I'm also interested in, in crystal growth, the, the, the um, speed and the concentration of the feed of the carbonate is also going to affect 
uh, crystal size, and that may play uh, a component or, or requirement uh, of the of the final product. Um, so a lot of information packed, but hopefully that, is, that has simplified it for you. So we talked about carbonate, which is precipitation. Now we're we're going to talk about uh, lithium chloride to lithium hydroxide conversion, and this takes two paths. One, we can go through a a phys chem. Uh, where we take lithium chloride and we have an intermediate process before we get to the lithium hydroxide, meaning that we form, we go from lithium, uh, the lithium chloride, we go through carbonation and form lithium carbonate, and then we take the lithium carbonate and convert that to the final product of lithium hydroxide. So there's an additional step um, in, in, um, to, to produce lithium hydroxide. Um, probably the most common process used. Uh, however, I can go directly from a lithium chloride without an intermediate step using electrolysis. Um, but specifically, I'm going to say a, a, a membrane facilitated electrolysis, not electrolysis where I'm splitting, um, I'm taking water and splitting hydrogen and oxygen out of water. It, it's uh, It's a specialized electrolysis specifically for hydroxide or the hydroxyl ion uh, generation. So, um, so let's take a look at first the chemical uh, reaction, pretty straightforward. Uh, lithium chloride is we're going to convert to lithium uh, carbonate first. So step one, lithium chloride, uh, I'm putting my, uh, my soda ash sodium carbonate, and I'm going to convert to, I'm going to precipitate out uh, by uh, into lithium carbonate. I'm then going to take the, the lithium carbonate, and I'm going to then run it through another process uh, of uh, using a, um, uh, a hydroxyl ion now to, and in this case, I'm going to use sodium hydroxide in order to convert the lithium carbonate into lithium hydroxide. And there's a preference for um, the hydroxide to complex with the lithium um, than uh, it's staying in, in this form. So we produce the lithium hydroxide uh, down just below lithium. Lithium hydroxide, uh, this is typically what we refer to it, um, but it is lithium hydroxide monohydrate, meaning that um, in the in the chemical structure to it, there is a water molecule attached to it. Um, so one of the things when you produce lithium hydroxide crystals uh, or, or final product, one, one of the concerns is that you might want to take a look at the storage um, and how it's packaged because you can uh, absorb um, uh, water as well as it can absorb CO2. Um, just as a, as a side note, lithium hydroxide is, is used in um, uh, uses CO2 scrubbers, um, so in submarines and spaceships and so on. So uh, it has a tendency, lithium hydroxide has a tendency to grab on and absorb CO2. And why you may want to have control uh, in environment or packaging is that if it absorbs um, a, a CO2 or carbonate, then originally what you, you've produced is lithium hydroxide is now starting to convert over to lithium carbonate. So um, you may have 100% lithium hydroxide to start off with, but at the end of it, um, depending on where you put it, I don't know um, if it's been sitting around for a while, what the ratio of lithium hydroxide to lithium carbonate is. So something just to be uh, aware of is um, not that we go into it, but the packaging and, uh, and the storage uh, of it. Um, so try to get it out the door as quickly as possible. Um, so. I said lithium hydroxide, but as you're aware, there's other sources of hydroxyl ions that that, that you can use. Um, and uh, the common, of course, is is uh, is lime. Um, so calcium um, calcium hydroxide, uh, but you can also use sodium hydroxide. Um, when using lime, um, we uh, think we get into it. So when we use lime, um, because it's calcium hydroxide, one of the uh, processes um, that you're going to have to, to um, introduce is the removal of, of the hardest ions. So I use um, calcium hydroxide. That's great. I've got the hydroxyl ion, but then I have to remove 
the uh, the calcium afterwards. So there's a uh, an additional polishing step um, that I didn't put in here that you would have to go through. But um, depending on what you use, I'm going to say it really um, may be dictated uh, by the reactant cost. Um, sodium hydroxide probably going to be uh, a bit more expensive than um, hydro uh, lime. Uh, also, if you use lime, you may have more solids generation. So another consideration is how am I going to manage the uh, generated solids on, on site? So that may dictate what, what you use. Um, sorry, uh, down below, hydroxide, you said sodium hydroxide. Um, you know, lime is the source, but you could also use, again, hydroxide like potassium hydroxide, as long as you have a hydroxide and the ratios uh, are, are stoichiometric balance, then you're, you're good to go. So uh, the last component, so we talked about the chemical conversion. Uh, and the last aspect is uh, lithium hydroxide conversion by electrolysis, but uh, more specifically by, by membrane electrolysis. And as you can see uh, over on the right hand side here is that you have two cells um, separated by semi permeable membrane, which will allow lithium to transport across the membrane. And you'll see um, this is a cathode. Here's an anode. Uh, we um, introduce lithium chloride uh, in, into the cathodic cell. And by putting a DC current across that, what happens, we will evolve the lithium and we'll split the lithium chloride and the lithium ions will migrate across the semi-permeable mem membrane uh, onto the anode, uh, in, into the anode. Uh, and with, excuse me, and with the anode, we do have hydroxide generation and that's what's going to complex. The, the, the anode, which makes the hydroxyl ion available in the anodic uh, tank, will complex with the lithium forming the lithium hydroxide. So the electrolysis uh, generates the hydroxides as well as splitting the lithium chloride, allowing the lithium to complex with the hydroxide, uh, hydroxyl ion. So in taking a look at uh, this process is you need a specialized membrane. It's a fluorinated uh, cation exchange membrane a specific sulfonic acid group similar to like a, um, a polymeric um, a resin bead. Um, and that facilitates the transport uh, of the lithium across the ions into uh, from, from the cathodic to, to the anodic tank. That is a specialized membrane and it, it is, um, I'm going to say pros and cons, um, it has the tendency that if this is not a pure solution, uh, then you can get fouling uh, occurring on this, uh, and that would not be uh, out of the realm of reality uh, right now. Um, it, it is evolving, um, but that's one of the challenges is this um, contamination or, or fouling of this membrane um, if this is not absolutely pure. So it is not very forgiving um, if any contaminants are, are in the solution. Another aspect is that you, it's not AC, it's DC, so I need a rectifier to, to, to put into it a couple of components. Um, it just means that the current has to be in one direction only, so that's why we use DC current. Um, the hydroxyl system complex and lithium chloride feeds needs to be you know, very, very pure for this to work. Um, so because of that fouling and, and the specialized um, not a lot of these, but the specialized membranes is that the price of these membranes are actually quite high. Uh, if they do get fouled or contaminated, then you're going to have to replace them. So there is a, um, a capex cost. Um, because you're driving this, this is high energy. The efficiency isn't very good at splitting and, and complexing. Um, so there is a high energy cost associated. Um, as I said, it's susceptible to scaling and fouling. Um, I don't know if if you can pull these out and clean them uh, as of yet, um, maybe in the future, but if they foul, you're, um, it's really going to affect the efficiency of the process. And the other component with the electrolysis is lithium chloride. That's great. We've got the lithium and hydroxide, but the other component is uh, now we have chlorine gas and we have hydrogen gas. So two gases that pose some challenges um, and, and uh, and with chlorine gas health risks. So you wanna make sure that these are managed and, and controlled uh, properly um, because of the 
uh, potential environment and health risks associated to them. So the crystallization of lithium hydroxide, drilling into this a little bit uh, more, lithium hydroxide is sol soluble in, in water. Um, one of the components to that, that's great, but um, I need to decrease the solubility. So one of the components to that is that with the lithium hydroxide solution, I'm going to extract water. So I'm going to be concentrating that solution up by removing water. Various means to do that. We typically um, discuss uh, forward osmosis, but there are other mechanisms to do that. So we create by extracting that water, we increase the concentration, bring it to a super saturated and some um, saturated uh, or super saturated. And then we're going to pass that over once it's saturated over to the crystallizer, which we said elevated, you know, it would be uh, elevated temperature uh, to, to facilitate the um, crystal structure and the speed of that process. Um, so the crystalline structure, uh, as I said, you've got these, the, the lithium, and the hydroxide ions come together, uh, and a couple of them, and they form this, this unit cell, the framework, the basis, the foundation of, of what, or, or I, I should say the blueprint or the template of how the crystal is to grow. And it's only the lithium and, and the hydroxide ions that are attracted and, and um, will complex, um, I'm sorry, form with the crystal, um, the unit cell, and as more and more form, then we get this nucleization. So it's this larger crystal form. We're starting to form this the, the crystal matrix or the crystalline structure. Now, as we we allow that um, to to we give it a little bit of time and will continue to grow as long as it's in a super saturated or a saturated solution, that it's going to um, facilitate the growth and the the speed uh, of of the growth. Um, and to the point that it continues to grow, and then we get a macro crystal where we can now physically see the crystal with, with, within the tank. And because only the lithium and hydroxide ions are being uh, used uh, in the formation and the growth of the crystal, this is why, uh, and it precludes, typically precludes contaminants and only, and only those ions, that's why you get, uh, are able to, to realize and achieve um, purities of 99.9% of, .9 um, uh, of, uh, of, of product purity. So very, very high. Um, battery grade is not that high, but who knows what the future holds. Uh, you can still achieve battery grade quality using conventional processes. But again, this is, this is a, a, an option uh, in the production of, of, of lithium. Um, pros and cons to each one. Um, if I'm adding additional equipment, uh, such as crystallized, there's, there's associated CapEx costs and OpEx costs. It changes the, the dynamics or the, vi the economic viability or the economics, I should say, uh, of, of the process. So something to, to, to balance. Am I getting value by, by, by adding that additional process? So uh, there are a lot of variables. When you talk about crystallization, I'm not a, an expert by any means because there, it, it is a complex process. Uh, if you talk to anyone who who um, is knowledgeable in this, uh, I know enough to be dangerous um, that I have done uh, crystallization in the past, but with sugars and so on. Um, but there is a, a true complexity to it. There is uh, pressure, feed rates, temperatures, um, you know, the rate of stir, the rate of feed. So if you do uh, crystallization, it is best to to um, talk to an expert in this industry um, a an additional component uh, to this um, you know when you're talking about crystallization one of the common things that you you do look at is um, what you'll see is that that when you you form crystals and they're being ejected from from the reactor is that a small percentage of the uh, lithium hydroxide crystals or solids will be reintroduced uh, into, into the tank. The reason for that is that, remember we talked about, I need to bring the ions together in a cluster unit cell, and then I get the nucleization, is that, well, if I, if I recycle a percentage of it, I've already got to the nuclei, nucleation um, stage, and that just speeds the process up 
and I'm introducing, I've already, here's the crystal structure, which is, here's the template, which the crystals to grow. I'm just introducing that back into, into the process. So you'll see in a lot of crystallization, um, some of uh, a percentage is, is recirculated back into the reactor to facilitate the speed <coughs> in, in the nucleation process and crystal growth. Um, typically you wanna run this at super saturation. Um, so you see steam coming into this. So I'm going to drive as much water off as possible to keep a super saturated uh, solution. Um, within the tank, you can see there's a um, uh, majority, if it is crystallization, there's a viewport. Um, if you've got good eyes, you can see it. Uh, if not, then typically you're going to be using some type of um, um, uh, electronic device in which to, to, to view um, a microscope to view in, into the tank. Um, but the key is that because I can view in the tank, I can actually see the, the crystal growth and I can see the size of the crystal growth and also the de definitive form of the crystal growth, whether I have very crisp and sharp edges on the crystals or whether they're rounded, um, uh, uh, ra rounded and smooth. Uh, sharp, uh, crisp uh, edges mean the crystal has grown. Um, meaning uh, if it's rounded and so on, it means that the maturity of the crystal has been there a little bit more. What does that mean is that, well, maybe if you've got too many of these uh, mature crystals that you you, you want to speed up the, the, the ejection of them. As I said, a lot of variables um, and things to consider on the crystallization. Uh, another new component uh, coming in with the advent of, uh, of AI um, is using artificial intelligence to control the crystal crystal uh, process. So I can take in, once I have my process, I can input all of those uh, operation per, um, uh, variables and parameters, uh, as well as a, vi a physical view of, of the crystal structure and use AI to actually automate and control that whole process. So that's something very exciting uh, that's now being introduced in, into the market space with the advent and um, continued um, um, evolution of, of, of AI. Um, so that is the, the precipitation and crystallization methods used in the production of uh, lithium carbonate and lithium hydroxide. And then the final stage is uh, solid separations, is now taking the, um, the, the solids and separating them from the liquids um, uh, the particles from 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 the liquids uh, and centrifuges are you know there's different filtration Centri centrifuges are probably uh, the most common uh, readily available from from different companies um, and the the final component is that once it's been centrifuged it's the the drying and milling um, and getting it to the the final product and the um, uh, the milling will bring it to what is the particle size that I'm looking for if that is a, a, a requirement um, a specific particle size so um, that being said that is the the end of our um, discussions on uh, lithium carbon lithium hydroxide conversion I really hope uh, you've taken some uh, information or there uh, some additional or new insights have been provided. Uh, as always, if you like to call me directly and, and um, talk about any aspects of it, uh, or I can provide you some additional information, please feel free. I'm, I'm very open but with respect providing um, uh, as much information I can, short of our, our NDAs with our clients on specifics uh, on uh, how to help you, support you, and possibly advise you in your, your daily uh, process and design. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, I look forward in, um, in talking with you on the next webinar, which will now be diving into uh, additional advanced uh, DLE um, investigation, uh, as well as water use uh, within the DLE processes. Uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions on additional webinars on, on DLE uh, processes or technologies, please let me know, uh, and uh, I'll do my, my best in order to facilitate and, uh, and deliver that um, uh, information to you. With that, take care. Thank you.